Good morning, New Life. We are at Mike's family. My name is Hannah. I'm John. And I'm Cassie. Welcome, Welcome to, to church. church. Good morning, New Life. Welcome to church. My name is Diva, and I'm so glad that you're joining us online from the comfort of your home. So you might be wondering, why are you wearing that cone-shaped hat with spider webs on it, Diva? Well, I'm here to kind of tell you and give you an update about trunk or treat. You're gonna start seeing some posts on social media um, for new life. And so if you're not connected on social media, we encourage you to do so, so you can get the information. But we are gonna be having a COVID-friendly trunk or treat. And so there's a couple ways you can participate. This is all gonna take place October 31st on Halloween from 6 to 8 p.m. So mark your calendars for that. And there's three ways that you can enjoy trunk or treat. One is by being a participant and coming by um, in your costume to do a little trick or treat in the parking lot. The second is to help by donating candy to the candy drive. And we are gonna put bins out at New Life's facility from October 18th until the 25th, where you can just come by and drop in a bag of pre-wrapped candy. So um, that is another way you can help with the trunk or treat. And the third one is we need trunks. And we don't want your trunk if it has junk in it, but we do need different trunks to be out there. And you get to decorate your car however you see fit. If you wanna go all out, um, please do so. But we need trunks out there. And that's where we're gonna be handing out the candy. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you're wondering, well, I can donate my car for that time being, but I can't stay. We have an, a number of volunteers who would be willing Willing to kind of man that for you um, so please feel free to sign up you're gonna see a link in our chat space for more information and we are gonna roll out details throughout the month so if you felt like oh I need more information on this it is coming and you will get all that information but we are really gonna need the success of you guys to help out by providing a trunk otherwise what fun is it to go to a parking lot if there's not really any place to trick-or-treat so we are hoping that you guys sign up for that. Now, let's go ahead and get into a couple other tools you're gonna need for today. The first one is the online connect card and that's gonna um, come up in the chat space as a link. And you can go ahead and fill this out with any prayer requests or praises. And we really feel honored to partner with you when you provide us um, something to be praying for or celebrating with you. So go ahead and fill that out. It doesn't require a lot of information, your name and there's a space for you to go ahead and type in anything you want to send to us. And the second thing is our giving link. Joel has laid out for us, um, you know, what giving is looking like these days at New Life. And so we do appreciate your continued generosity to keep the church strong. And we use the church in so many uh, ways that even though we're not in the building, the church is there. We just used it for a cooling center recently. We used it for an evacuation shelter recently. So we are still kind of using the building, not as much as we want to with the COVID um, restrictions and all, but please know that we are still connecting with our community. And so that giving link will pop up in the chat space. Well, today we're going to hear from Christy. She's going to continue this series, Riding the Wind. And today we're talking about relationships. We all have them. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. They're stressful. Um, and so we get to hear from her. And before we do that, we're going to move into a time of worship. So I just encourage you to sing out these songs. Let them wash over you. Just listen to them if singing is not your thing. Um, and so I hope you enjoy this service. i 
Last week, Ron talked about, out of Isaiah, how when we wait on the Lord, He will uh, lift us up on wings like eagles. And this is a song that's about that. And so I just um, encourage you, if you want to sing along, go right ahead, right there in your living room or wherever you're at. Um, and uh, let's, let's wait upon the Lord this morning. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. series called Ride the Wind. We're talking about how growing in our faith is an adventure of partnering with God as He works in our lives. And it's not a passive um, working, it's not a solo endeavor. We participate with Him as He empowers us and He leads us through life. And if you want to catch the wind, you need to raise your sails. And today we're going to look at the sail of relationship the sale of friendship, and we are gonna see how God can use our relationship to grow our faith. So I have lived in several different cities over the course of my life, um, and this week I was thinking about all the different places and all the different friends I've had over the years and how they've all shaped me in some form or another. And the friends that stand out to me the most are the ones who were like a sail that brought me closer to God and they helped me grow through significant seasons in my life. And so today I just want to tell you about three of my dearest friends. They're relationships that mean a lot to me. Um, 
The first one is my friend Angela, and we met when we were in junior high school. I was a 13-year-old kid, and, and her friendship, she walked me through the first real trauma that I had experienced in my life. And through her friendship, God healed some of the deepest wounds. Um, she and her family kind of took me in, and they took me on vacations with them. They had me at their dinner table. And as a family, they just really modeled who Jesus was for me. And they shaped my spiritual formation just through um, everyday conversations and the way they lived their life. Love her. Uh, the next friend is my friend Alyssa. And she and I really connected in our 20s. We got married in our early 20s around the same time. And then we both moved uh, respectively from San Diego to LA and we had babies around the same time. And, you know, when our, our kids were just little babies, we used to put them to bed at night and then we would go out to Starbucks and just sit on the patio like total mom zombies and we would swap stories about the day and we would share things like how we had to learn how to use a rectal thermometer on our baby and just laugh. And um, I just love her. She had this huge passion for God and she inspired my passion for God. And I remember I had this name for her, I called her a load-bearing wall because it seemed like the more um, weight and pressure that life threw at her, the stronger she became. And God showed me through her how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit instead of trying to do good things on my own. And then the next friend that I had is uh, my friend Dre. And Dre was the worship pastor at our last church that we were at in Canada. And she and I served together for many years in the trenches of ministry. And we kind of cheered each other on as we stepped into our callings. And she and I, we shared an office. And we just had so many uncountable moments of quick prayer sessions in the back hallways of the church before we go out to minister. And um, Dre is someone who uh, knows who God called me to be, and she reminds me of who I am when life gets hard and I forget. So I'm curious about your life. Like, who are the people that have inspired your faith and who are the people that have led you into a closer relationship with God? Can you picture them right now? Are they someone from your past or maybe someone currently in your life? Maybe take a second and think of them by name and thank God for bringing them into your life right now. Or maybe they're even in the chat space. And if they're in the chat space, give them a shout out and thank God for them in the chat space. Because I'm so thankful for those relationships that when I was far away, they brought me closer to God. And I'm especially grateful because of the days that we're in right now. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but in our culture right now, we are living in a generation of isolation. And it just feels like people are growing further and further apart. And there are so many obstacles. Um, I mean, for one thing, we're six feet apart. We're sheltering in place. Um, we're in the middle of an election year where people are deciding how they're going to treat one another based on who they vote for. And on top of that, you know, doing community and being vulnerable is something that is not a huge part of our, cultural in our, our culture in general. general. Like, we watch life happen on our phones from far away, and we feel like we're experiencing community. And as I was writing this message this week, it was kind of crazy timing because my family and I watched that Netflix documentary called The Social Dilemma. I don't know if you've seen it, but it lined up with so many of my thoughts um, for this message. And our culture right now just loves to put their best foot forward, project strength, and we keep the deeper parts of ourselves hidden. And it just feels like there's this natural pull out there. And if we're not intentional, if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves isolated by default. And this is why I love Jesus, because when the world is pulling us apart, Jesus is bringing us together. 
And as Jesus followers, he is actually calling us to come together to create a space where people are allowed to be broken, where people are allowed to make mistakes, and then we work together to get better together. So today we're going to look at a passage from 2 Corinthians where the early church, uh, it's one of the early church leaders is writing, his name is Paul, and he's writing to his church um, basically because they are drifting apart and um, he's writing them to just say basically, hey guys, like I'm your pastor and you guys are acting like fools, so let's get it together, okay? So we're starting uh, with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you have your Bibles, open to verse 16. And it says this, So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. Okay, so what's he saying? He's saying we don't evaluate we don't evaluate people by how they look or what they have. Instead, we look at the person on the inside and we ask the question, who does God say that they are? So verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be, the one, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So God settled this relationship between us and him through what Jesus did for us on the cross. And now he's calling us to settle our relationships with each other. So I love this passage uh, because it kind of gives us a blueprint. And there's actually three gifts that God offers to us in this passage, three gifts of how, um, we can make the most of our relationships. So we're gonna impact them today. So the first gift that God has given us is he's given us a relationship with himself. And you and I have access to this relationship through his son, Jesus. And this relationship begins the moment that I accept his sacrifice for my sin on the cross and I believe that Jesus is who he says he is. The moment this happens, I step into real life. And this is the reality that I have access to God who loves me. So God set me free. He has given me purpose. He walks with me every moment of every day. He forgives my sins. He forgives my mistakes. He heals me. He transforms me into the person that he created me to be. And this step is so important because it is impossible to talk about having healthy relationships without first having a healthy relationship with God. So I cannot properly love another unless I know the love of God first because God defines what love is and it's a higher way of love. It's full of grace and truth and it's higher than anything that I could ever figure out on my own. Love is not defined by our world. Love is not defined by our culture. God defines what love is, and he alone reveals that love to us through the words in the scriptures. God loves you. And the words from this verse, this gift of God, this salvation gift, and reconciliation with God is still available for us today. And he wants to reconcile with you today. He wants to free you from isolation and loneliness today. And he wants to pull you close and have a deep friendship with you. It reminds me of when we used to live in LA and we bought this really cool old piano and um, it had ivory keys and it had this beautiful kind of woodwork on it. It was just gorgeous. And we, we bought it and we had a piano tuner out um, to tune it. And the piano tuner brought a tuning fork. And a tuning fork is this thing that emits a pure tone that the tuner uses 
to tune the piano to it. And every piano that the tuner uh, tunes, he, he tunes it to that tuning fork. And as the church, Jesus is our pure tone. And it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what your background is, when you come to our church family, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And it's actually His job to tune you so that you sound like Jesus. And as you experience His love for you, He begins to teach you how to love like Him. So once we experience His love, then we are prepared to love others and open the next gift that He has for us. And that next gift that He has for us is peace with others. And I love how Paul puts it. He says, God has given us a task of reconciling people to himself and each other. So when we look at what Jesus accomplished for us in the scriptures, uh, we discover that he reconciled people to each other. He brought together like the most unlikely people. He brought together tax collectors and prostitutes. He brought together just crooked people who left their past behind to be reconciled to Jesus. Because in Jesus, people who may have nothing in common now have lots in common. In Jesus, the barriers that normally would divide us are erased. In Jesus, because of his love, I now serve others and I prefer them above myself. And the early church was this beautiful example of this. It was a melting pot of diverse people, a motley crew of unlikely friends that were all brought together by Jesus. And it's so cool to watch because he takes anyone who is willing to come to him, young, old, rich, poor, it doesn't matter your style, it doesn't matter your status in life, it doesn't matter your past. And Jesus is still bringing together unlikely people today. And we all hear that pure tone. And when we come together, we accept each other, we love each other, we cheer each other on toward the tune of his spirit. And when someone plays a wrong note, when someone <laughs> comes in off key, correction happens within the community. So how do we become reconcilers? Well, there's a couple ways. One way is that community is a lifestyle. God loves community so much that the scriptures say that he places the lonely in families. And I think one thing that COVID has taught us as a church is that community is not found simply in coming to church Sunday to Sunday. Like God's original design for the church was so much more than that. And we see that in Acts chapter 2 where it says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And they worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Like this is the kind of community that I wanna be part of. And I'm not talking about acquaintances, I'm talking, talking about deep friendships that are authentic, that are full of love and mutual respect, being known and loved and accepted, even when we mess up. So Joel and I, you know, we're still kind of new here, uh, but we are so thankful for our, our New Life community. You guys have shared meals with us. You have invited us into your lives. You've opened your arms to us. And we just started our first community group uh, last week, and we are so hungry to continue making those relationships. You know, the way God designed church was not to go from Sunday to Sunday, but to live in community every day. It's not just about a church service. It's about experiencing community Monday through Saturday. Because if you're going to church, if you're, if you're not doing church on a deeper level, you actually can't receive everything that God wants to give you. Uh, you can't receive everything he, that he wants for you just by tuning in on Sunday mornings. It's like, if I want to get healthy, but I only go to the gym one day a week and work out, and the rest of the week I'm lazy and I eat junk, you'd say, good luck with that. But we do the same thing with God. Like, we give him one day a week, and we live however we want on the other days and we expect to be a spiritually healthy person. So 
Another way that we can be a reconciler is to embrace the tension. So spiritual health is created in community with other believers. It's not created in isolation. And community requires sacrifice and it requires understanding. It requires laying your life down for the good of the whole. And Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And you know, iron sharpening iron is not a comfortable process. It's like this grinding, filing away at the dull edges. It's painful, it's uncomfortable at times, but it's worth it because we all become better in the end. And sometimes I think we shy away from this because we feel like maybe it isn't our place to have an honest conversation. But I love how Paul challenges us. He says, instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, he helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So we embrace the tension. Okay, so another way that we can be reconcilers is by remembering God's mercy. 2 Corinthians says, And God has given us this task of reconciling people to Him, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And I love that God gives us this task to reconcile uh, with people, and then immediately after, He reminds us of His mercy. It's like God saying, you know, I don't, hold your sins against you. So it's like, go make up with your enemies and remember, I don't hold grudges. I forgive completely and thoroughly. And if I, God, who is completely pure, and the Bible says there is no wickedness in him, if God who is perfect, he has the desire to forgive, then we certainly have no right to hold grudges. And in fact, it's so important to God that he requires us to forgive each other in order to receive his forgiveness. So I think bitterness is kind of a sneaky little thing. And it actually comes in and it can drive out God's mercy. And bitterness can often grow within our hearts when we, were, when we are unaware. And that's why we're told in the scriptures, like, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you because it will corrupt many. And one easy way that we can know if we are suffering from bitterness is if you feel glad when you see people <laughs> that you don't like suffer. It's an indicator that you are suffering too because bitterness, when it comes in, it actually corrupts and it perverts every heart that it occupies. And God tells us, you know, to weep with those who weep. He tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice. But bitterness comes in and it actually causes us to do the opposite. And the good news is that God loves to tend to our souls and he loves to take things out that shouldn't be there. So if you're experiencing bitter bitterness today, you know, all you have to do is acknowledge it and ask God to help remove it from your heart. And he's faithful, he'll do it because he loves you and he cares about you. So remember God's mercy and kindness to you when you were his enemy. And let that be the foundation that kind of shapes all of your relationships and your interactions. So we have this wonderful calling and message of bringing people together through Jesus. And he brings people closer to God and each other. Does your life reflect that? Or is your life pushing people further apart? When you think about the relationships that you currently have, are they healthy? Are they influencing you towards bringing people together? Or are they undermining what God is trying to accomplish in you? Okay, so quick recap. The first gift is a relationship with God. The second gift is peace with others. And the third gift that God has given us is a message to share. And I love this because it's like newsflash, like you have permission to be concerned with others. You have permission to step into the awkward. And at the beginning of this message, I told you about my three dear friends. And you know, you know why those friends stood out to me? 
because they are women who took it upon themselves to be concerned with my life. Who can you be that for in your life? And I thank God for their willingness to reach out through the awkwardness and include me in their lives. And they did that because God gave them a message to share. I love in 2 Corinthians 5, it says, and he, has, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors and God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. It was a message that was given through pulling up an extra chair at a dinner table. It was a message given through two exhausted moms sharing a coffee late night on a patio. It was a message given through friends sharing prayers for each other in backstage hallways. Friends that pointed me to Jesus time after time, over and over, again and again. And these friends are sales in my life, helping me to experience the Holy Spirit moving me forward. And I'm so thankful for people who stick their neck out, for people who risk their reputation, they risk rejection, so that others can know that they are invited into a relationship with a God in heaven who loves them. And this is what we're called to be for one another. I love what Jesus tells Peter in the book of Luke. Um, Peter was one of Jesus' disciples and one of his best friends. And at a time when Jesus needed him the most, right before Jesus was about to go to the cross, uh, Peter ran away from the scene, scared, and denied that he knew Jesus three times. He just flat out lied and rejected Jesus in his darkest moment. And then later, after Jesus resurrected, he had this heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Peter, and their friendship was restored. And Jesus immediately in that moment gave him a new mission. And it says in Luke, it says, but I, Jesus says, but I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this, after you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. I love that. Make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. And as his followers today, the same mission applies to all of us. Strengthen the faith of your brothers and sisters. Every single one of us is called to be part of the mission of building relationships with others. And I wanna remind you today of your calling to be a reconciler, that we are sales for one another, helping each other to ride the wind of God's spirit as he carries us along toward the fullest kind of life that Jesus wants to give us. Right now, our world needs peacemakers more than ever. Our world needs people who unify and forgive and bring healing more than ever right now. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for your love that brings people together, that heals us from isolation and loneliness, Father. And God, I wanna pray for our church that we would step into our calling of being reconcilers, that we would step into our calling of bringing forgiveness and healing into every moment that we experience. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one, the one for whom you loved and gave your son for humanity. Increase my love, help me to love with hope. Love it erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Oh, 
how you love from the homeless to the famous and in between you formed us you made us carefully cause in the end we're all your children help me to love with open arms like you do love it all the lines and sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes They would see you Even in just a smile They would feel the Father's love Let all my life tell of who you are And the wonder of such a good father oh let all my life tell of who you are and the wonder of your never ending love oh let all my life tell of who you are that you're wonderful and such a good father good time we've had together in this digital space. Thank you to Christy for teaching and for everyone who's participated in putting the service together for us. And I want to share a couple of things as we come to an end. And the first is I want to invite you into giving and supporting the work and life of our church. Last week I shared some pretty significant news about where we're sitting as a church right now with our current budget needs. And the impact that COVID has had on us this year. And I just want to encourage you to keep leaning in to what God wants to say to you about your part to play in this. Everything we do as a church is made possible through our collective generosity. And you and I get the privilege of partnering with God and partnering with one another when we give out of the blessing of what God has entrusted to us. And giving is an awesome way that we get to experience the blessing God has for us and take that blessing and then share it with our church at large. And so as we continue to take steps forward, I want to invite you to give and give generously as God guides and leads you. 
as a church, we're going to get through this time as we all lean in together. And so I want to thank you for that. A couple of ways you can do that. One, in the chat space right now, there will be a link for giving and you can click that. Automating your giving by giving online is a great way to do it. That's how Christy and I do it. So we know that every month our generosity is flowing into the life of our church. You can also go to our website, newlifepetaluma.com and find ways to give there as well. But that's one of the things I want to make sure that you know about as we continue walking forward as a church and your opportunity to be a part of who we are now as we make it through COVID together and stand strong as a church on the other side, ready to go and continue chasing after the things that God has for us as his church. Second thing I want to make sure that you know about is that we're really excited to start patio services. These will be outdoor services on our patio out into our parking lot that we'll be gathering together to come for music and message. We're going to do these safely, distancing, everyone bringing your own chairs, wearing face masks. We'll have designated spaces within the parking lot that we can set up, spread out, and have a chance to come together as a church. And we're going to have our first one on Sunday, October 25th in the afternoon. So I want to make sure you know these are not replacing our online services that we have every Sunday at 10 a.m. These are going to be extra things that we're going to add to help create a sense of togetherness as a church. So we're doing it outside so we can do it responsibly and safely. We want to give you that heads up. We'll give you more information in the coming days and weeks about that, but just pencil that in. So that's something that's coming up. We're really excited about. We want to make sure you know, and we're going to continue chasing after what God has for us as his church in this time together. So with that, have a great day. Thanks for joining us. We love you and we are in this with you.